Dear students, today I shall be discussing on peritonsular abscess or PNC. It is defined as collection of pus between tonsillar capsule and the superior constrictor muscle. It usually happens due to both aerobic as well as anaerobic organism infections in the tonsil might happen de novo without prior history of tonsillitis or prior history of throat infections. It also might happen as a sequelae of acute tonsillitis where the crypts will be blocked by the debris or discharge which leads to intertonsillar abscess and peritonsillitis leading to quincy or peritonsillar abscess. The infection goes out from the tonsils to form peritonsillar abscess. One of the important causes is abscess of Weber's salivary gland which are present in the supratonsillary fossa of the tonsils that also might lead to quincy. As we have already told, quincy is common in the upper respect of the tonsils because of presence of Weber's salivary glands over there near the crypta magna and the upper part containing loose areolar tissue. How to diagnose peritonsillar abscess? The diagnosis is usually straightforward. When a young adult comes with history of severe rhinophagia, fever, halitosis, and muffled voice, you have to suspect peritonsillar abscess. And on examination, the patient will have fever. The patient might or might not open the mouth properly. There might be trismus. If you can look at the peritonsillar area, it will have been swollen and there will be congestion of the peritonsillar area. Tonsils shall be hidden behind the anterior pillar and pushed medially and congested. In this way, you can differentiate acute tonsillitis from quincy. In acute tonsillitis, tonsils won't be hidden. Tonsils will be open and tonsils will be enlarged. But in case of peritonsillar abscess, the tonsils will be hidden behind the anterior pillar. There will be enlarged and tender jugular diagnostic lymph node, usually at one side, and patient might have torticolis due to decreased ability to move the neck towards that side. It has to be stressed that peritonsillar abscess is usually unilateral condition. It does not happen bilaterally most of the times. How to manage a case of peritonsillar abscess? As I have already told, diagnosis is most of the time it is straightforward diagnosis. When the patient has severe throat pain with rhinophagia, fever, inner neck nodes, and patient is having torticolis and a muffled voice, then you have to think of peritonsillar abscess. But to confirm, you have to make a white board needle aspiration with 18 gauge needle which reveals pus. If that does not reveal pus, patient might have peritonsillitis alone or patient might have other condition like Peripharyngeal cellulitis, tumors, or sometimes even malignancy. Occasionally, you should suspect internal character aortic aneurysm, but which is quite uncommon. If it is there, you can see pulsations on the tonsils. If you look at the pulsations on the tonsils, please don't touch it. Urgent admission, intravenous fluids, as the patient will have dehydration, fluids are to be given. Intravenous septriaxone plus ardendazole covering all the gram positive, negative as well as endrobic infections is to be given. Antihistamine, decongestant, and analgesic medicines are to be prescribed. There shall be severe pain, so patients should be given analgesic as well. Antiseptic mouth gargle like betadine. Occasionally, steroids are to be given to decrease the edema of the oropharynx, otherwise, patient might have some form of respiratory distress. When the patient is having peritonsillar abscess, incision and drainage is the mainstay of treatment. The incision shall be made with number 11 blade or thelonious peritonsillar abscess drainage forceps, which acts both as the incision and the drainage purpose. A nick is made above and lateral to the junction of two imaginary lines, horizontal line passing through the base of jugula and vertical line along the anterior tonsillar pillar. And the incision is widened with sinus forceps and pus is drained. If we have patent abscess forceps, then sinus forceps are not necessary. Why should the incision be made at the superior lateral aspect of the two imaginary lines? This is very important because when you suppose when you make incision over here, then the tonsil might be injured. This is the tonsil which might be injured. So if the tonsil gets injured, then there will be bleeding from the tonsil and pus won't be revealed. So to reveal the pus, you have to make an incision over here in the superior lateral aspect. This is Quincy forceps, so called 6 months forceps. It acts both as incision agent as well as the drainage agent, sinus forceps like opening. 
Sometimes it might be difficult for us to find out the exact plane or the base of fibula and the anterior pillar. And at that time, we have to make a nick at the most dependent portion in the nerve pharynx. When the patient develops peritoneal abscess, then tonsils are to be removed. But when the patient is having peritoneal abscess for the first time, then we can wait. When the patient develops for the second time, then surgery has to be performed. The second attack of PNC in adults is an indication for tonsillectomy. The tonsil can be removed at the interval of around 4 to 6 weeks to avoid the inflammation. And occasionally hot tonsillectomy is performed, also called as abscess tonsillectomy at the time of abscess. It is usually avoided as it leads to more bleeding or occasionally septicemia. For some people think that as the patient is being admitted and the patient is having pain, it is better to perform tonsillectomy at the same sitting. When the children develop peritoneal abscess, which is quite rare in children, surgery is indicated after first attack itself. That means when the child feels better, then surgery is performed after 4 to 6 weeks. But in adults, it is usually after the second attack because 80% of patients won't have repeated inflammation. So for those 80 percent we are doing surgery for nothing. This is the reason why we don't perform tonsillectomy after the first attack of peritoneal abscess in adults. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you so much.